Greetings and welcome to Jeffco Films. In my search for another scary movie for October, I come across this 2002 film. It's set in Ireland, in a small village where people transform into wolves. Well, let's review Wolfhound. Ow! Jesus, Cullum! Just because we're in the woods doesn't mean you have to act like an animal! This movie starts out with some Irish scenery as a family is driving to visit the place of their ancestors. A husband and wife are arguing and he throws her phone out the window and she makes him stop and go get it. They drive into town to the Kennedy homeland, there's a lot of stone and Stella is scared by an Irish wolfhound in the house when she opens up the door. There's a lot of strange imagery for Colin, a lot of memories flashing back in. He's a writer, and we get some weird dream sequences of a running dog, then a woman, and then an attack. Him and Stella go for a walk, and then they start fooling around in the forest. Who's watching your kids when you fool around in the forest? Well, Colm bites a little too hard, and that ruins the mood. Later, he's brainstorming, but it looks more like he's watching porn in his mind. And could he fake type any faster? Well, Roy, I'd just like to know who's buying me my drinks. keep doing these close-up shots of the fangs on these Irish wolfhounds, which actually look like pretty friendly dogs. And then Colm tells his kids a story about Irish wolfhounds, how they used to transform into humans. Then Stella takes her kids into town to get some supplies, and she meets Maura. There's a new supermarket about 40 miles up the Dublin Road, but if it's fruit and veg you're after, there's a stall behind the back of the pub in the mornings. And if there's fresh coffee you're after, we have that too. How did you know I was looking for fresh coffee? A little bird told me. <laughs> They end up getting nothing, and then Colm goes to a place to get some city records, and the chick there seems to know him. And the weird dude who's watching Stella uses even weirder pickup lines. Funny how much anger you can have towards someone you love, isn't it? Love and hate are sort of interconnected, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Suddenly another odd fuck shoots at the dogs back at the house because Colm is now back at the house. And then he takes him and shows him a place with these chains and restraints and then he pours him a drink. Bella tells Colm that she found more chains in the shed and she thinks that it's a kinky room but really I think we know it's because they transform into wolves. Colm sees a naked woman outside and investigates. Well, wouldn't you? We get a sweet forest glow, and then a dog attacks him in slow-mo, and we get a weird attack scene where another dog jumps in and saves him. And then he looks out his window, and he sees the dog, but then he sees this. This is where you insert man's best friend joke. She says that she's been waiting for him for a long time and then the lighting improves and some smoke. Why does she keep slapping him during sex? And is this technically bestiality? She sure hits him a lot. This is some strange slap sex. Colm walks inside later and Stella's pissed. She's very upset with him. But then Maura shows up at the New York Times and she's happy. Maura also knew Colm and she invites him down to the local pub where they meet Finn and Colm is trying to figure out how his parents died but nobody will tell him anything and randomly the record girl is babysitting the kids. She tells him a story and they fall asleep. All right, all right, all right, all right, right, jeez, to make two kangaroos down for your Auntie Clara's party. Finn tells Colm his parents did these things to each other and then he steps outside and he sees the dog morph into the blonde. And she's naked because she was a dog and dogs don't generally wear clothes. So that makes sense. That stands up. And he fools around with her till he gets interrupted by Macroth, who then goes inside and flirts with Stella. You need any help with that old house? You talk to me. Maybe we can plaster the walls together. Oh, really? Aye. All of them? Then, not even checking on his wife, Colm goes in and gets a drink and then he fights Macroff. He even shows some fangs but no one really notices. And then they drive home and the wife's pretty upset. And then Claire leaves. Claire, I think she's a crow if that makes any fucking sense. I'm perfectly capable of finding my own way home. Ew. What's this, feathers? Are you sure? Come on, let's go. 
Late at night, Colm sneaks out while Stella pretends to sleep, and she sees the wolfhound transform into a girl, this time with clothes on, and Colm brings chains and follows her into a random home where she gets naked to ask him some questions. There are those who know Colm, and there are those who don't know. Which are you? She chains him up and has sex with him, and I gotta say, that's some nice work of the smoke machine. Um, some other girls show up and get in on the fun too. Are they wolfhounds as well? Also, why would a dog get fake boobs? That's my question. And Sally tries to spell it out for us later. If Auntie Claire's a crow, and I'm a rabbit, and Mickey's a fox, what animal is Daddy, Mommy? Stella finds columns for writing notes, but it's just pictures of a wolfman having sex. That's odd. And the Macroft shows up, and he kind of forces himself on her until she pulls a knife, and he leaves. And then she takes her kids and goes to Morris. That night, because the tea took too long to make, Stella talks about her marriage problems, and Macroft shows up, and Colm senses it. And then Blondie shows up to him and says, Then I need your help. I can help you find your true form, but you're going to have to find your own way back. This time, I have to wear them. So he ties her down and bangs her to unleash his true form. I feel like a script to a porno got lost and fell in the studio's lap and they tried their damnest to make this into a film with a story. Again, time doesn't pass normally here and Doggy Colm walks up and Stella watches from the window as Doggy Colm and Makarov both transform into humans. I guess their clothes transform too. I guess that happens if you're a dude. The bar empties the watch and they fight and we get clips of dogs growling and then Colm manages to throw them down a well. Won't you stay a little while longer? It always takes a little time to get accustomed to a new place. Our ways may seem a little strange at first, but we're still your family. <laughs> Wait, you're his family? <laughs> you banged him. Macroff climbs out of the well, dry, because, you know, wells don't have water in them apparently, and he gets with his family and he drives off. He tells his family that everything's going to be okay now. And then we get a shot of the naked blonde girl. For no reason. The end. I recommend you watch the 2006 Russian Wolfhound, which is their version of Lord of the Rings. It even has an adorable bat companion, and it's a decent movie. Julia Silani, who played Siobhan, was 1995 Playmate of the Year, and she did one film after this. Alan Scotty never did another film after. I wonder why. Jennifer Courtney has a small list of work, did an episode of Dexter and Shameless. She has a good look to her, cute, seemed to have a personality and ability to act. So that kind of sucks that she hasn't done more. Maria Teese, who played Claire, got some TV work. I liked her, but her part was pretty weak. Fiona Kelly, who played Mora. This was her first film, and I found her believable as Iris because she is, and she only displayed really a consoling tone. Brian Monaghan, who played Makarov, was in the 1997 Space Jack, so maybe we'll see another of the three films he did, this one again being his last. You know where your home is, don't you, girl? In the end, you should take it as a sign when two or three actors just quit acting after doing a movie. It usually means it was a pretty shitty movie and ruined their careers. Or maybe they had a bad experience and, well, we'll never go back. At least they got to go to Ireland, though. I wonder if the character ever wrote a book about it. It seemed like this story could have been a book. Could have been an interesting book if they had actually elaborated and created a story. I would only recommend this movie if you've never seen boobs. Well, as always, thanks for watching.